Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and wanted to make a video for the new League mechanic, Trial of the Ancestors, what it's about, how to basically do it, and also a bit of an update on the uh, Ethereal Knives Trickster Starter that I started uh, personally, and how it's been going. Um, but basically, yeah, uh, the uh, Trial of the Ancestors mechanic for the most part uh, have been doing plenty of it. It is fairly out of the way of the normal game, so uh, while doing it during the campaign, I was definitely hindering my progress on the actual campaign quite profusely, and that means that it took me 12 hours to get through the actual campaign on this character because I spent maybe like three hours just fucking around with Trial of the Ancestors. It's pretty difficult during the campaign and not particularly rewarding for the campaign. Um, but it was still a lot of fun to try and figure out and try and engage with. So I didn't really regret doing that. Um, in other sort of news, the uh, Trickster is doing pretty well uh, for EK. I don't think it's a complete no-brainer build, so it might take a little bit of work. Mostly you just have to like fix mana and make sure that you make a few little upgrades here or there. Um, but I'll talk a bit more about the character later. First of all, let me get into Trial of the Ancestors, the mechanic itself. So there's an entirely separate zone you enter once you have silver coins that um, is for the league mechanic. It's this entire area. This entire area is just for all of the different tribes that you will be fighting and then you can buy and sell with them once you have favor during the actual event. Uh, you can buy and sell just units and also some um, equipment for those units. You need a silver coin for each one of these. So once you've built up a bunch of silver coins, you can just do this forever uh, and Essentially, um, you've either got, you pick a um, dude to fight and you've either got uh, rewards in the form of lots of extra favor, which lets you buy more units and as such progress further if um, you need that sort of assistance or look at the reward that is given and uh, sometimes some pretty good stuff and sometimes not too much and then your ranking here is just going to be something that progresses as you win more and it increases the difficulty of the entire thing as monster level goes up it does go up pretty drastically in difficulty as uh, monster level starts to go up you start to just find that everything's like one-shotting you either way basically all you do is um, pick some stuff that you think you might want with some favor uh, or some um, items and uh, it can be quite rewarding once i've gotten um, past like I, uh, monster level 70 i've had a divine orb offered to me twice and a six link offered to me as well uh, so i've got most of my money this league so far from this league mechanic uh, in any case so we'll pick something like that uh, and then you have a whole list of um, minions that you can start out with you gain more minions as you progress more just for the start of the battle and then you've got a few things that you can do with those minions um, pretty much the attacker thing is bait the escort is just stuff that's going to be rolling around with you the flankers are your bread and butter because uh, you put a couple of dudes that are really good on flank and all they're going to do is just go straight for the enemy totems and kill them so to actually win the round you have to just get rid of the enemy's totems all of them uh, you can either click it and channel to destroy it yourself or your teammates can go do that and they seem to be better at channeling and destroying enemy totems so um the strat is quite typically either have some stuff on defense or on escort and then you hold down the fort while you have some flankers that go into the enemy region and destroy their totems so in this case i'm basically um probably going to do something like um so after having you know done a few of these, I do have several minions I can play around with. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what the best strat is going to be here, but we'll do something like that. Uh, he can have a flank as well, and this guy looks like he can flank, and then he can flank, and I just make sure I basically fill up my flankers, and then I am um, doing as much of the mid combat as I can. Um, but if you are struggling on the combat as well, then you probably want some more on defense. But flank is what's going to get you started. You hit start, you'll do the little battle. Um, I'm at the stage where I'm probably going to be getting one shot a bunch. Uh, either way, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, because once you die, you can res um, and uh, keep fighting. I've been using um, Blade Blast EK, it's been pretty good. And then on top of that, uh, what do you call it? Void Sphere. Void Sphere helps to um, sort of disrupt the enemies, suck uh, the 
sort of dudes that are getting away from you back in, group them up and all that. So it's been pretty good for the build. Uh, it can go pretty quick like this, because as you can see, they're just flanking and just channeling the totem and beating it down. Uh, your enemies are going to feel quite a bit stronger than your um, teammates quite a lot of the time. And then, like I said, by the time you get to the higher levels, um, you start to get just like one shot. But if he's over there, they're keeping him busy. Destroy the totem. Pretty easy stuff sometimes. As you get further into the tournament, more rounds done. Uh, it does get tougher. They've got more on the field. But your goal is to basically just fill up the field as much as possible so that uh, you've got all the units on the field. Uh, so then you get further in, you get more um, stuff to work with. But the main thing I wanted to mention is... That you can buy and sell stuff so we go to Okoye over here there's favors as you can see i can't afford this thing um, i can afford a couple of things the items are something you're just going to put directly onto one minion that it's going to have for that person um, and you have to remove the minion from the field to do that uh, but you can just have a look at your favor over here see what you've got available to and then uh, go work with that so we've got 500 over there uh, we've got 500 over here can't afford this either but what you can do is technically sell something so this guy is pretty good for flank he's got like can't be slowed he creates walls and stuff uh this thing typically doesn't seem like it does much you can sell this minion and then afford this uh, and now we have an extra much better minion you can buy and sell equipment as well and this strat actually also works really well um, if you have a bunch of favor you don't need on someone else so for example um navali maybe can buy a tuatar or a tough snack tough snack's actually not bad i'm going to yoink that but um what you can do is if you don't need that item or that favor you can then go over to akoya and sell that over here so you can buy from someone else sell to someone else and stack up all of your um favor to the one thing you want because pretty typically like Maybe this one can sell like a turtle in the end, which is a really strong unit uh, that can flank and tank and all that sort of stuff. And it's going to cost a lot. It's pretty hard to save up for. So if you buy from everyone else and sell to this one person, then you can afford whatever it is you want from that person. It's something that's uh, maybe not too intuitive, not too many people know about yet. But yeah, the buying and selling from um, one favor to another is what can allow you to progress more and have better stuff. So we've got equipment um, ready to go somewhere. Uh, all of this is pretty mediocre, but a lot of favor from doing count and uh, eliminating him next. So for this field master, we'd probably put um, that on him there. And then I can have him on flank. And then once again, going to be the same sort of strat. And uh, we'll just try and let our teammates do the flanking, do the killing, and uh, we keep them busy in the midfield. So you play as much or as little as you want till you find good rewards and it seems to be pretty fun to me honestly as a very different mechanic in PoE, very side piece of content and uh, I've engaged with it plenty and I think it's been pretty damn cool at least so far for the first couple of days. Uh, the initial battles are always going to be quite a clusterfuck right at the start uh, and they, like I said, since they are typically a bit stronger than you, um, your minions are going to be dying and you might get overwhelmed but you have to keep them busy until your flankers can essentially kill one of the other totems or a couple of the other totems or until um, you've killed a few of their guys so that they start respawning a bit longer and longer and then it becomes a one-way sort of battle and it does cascade quite quickly to the point where it's just basically over on their behalf. So the flanker strategy is pretty much what everyone's doing as far as I can tell, uh, especially in the higher tiers. You can, as, as you can see, I'm almost getting one shot by everything. It's gonna be hard to avoid that. Either way, I think it's been pretty cool so far and um, hopefully you guys have been enjoying the lead mechanic as well. It gets a lot more fun once you get to higher tiers um, of your reward structure and uh, figure out how to actually be able to do stuff it helps a lot to be able to kill some of their enemies but for a lot of it as far as i can tell you don't really even need to be a very powerful character you just need to be able to do the right strategy and waste some of their time every now and again and then the reward structure can be pretty good it's where you get your tattoos from which are the things that are going to change your passives into uh more powerful versions of 
little passives and uh, I've yet to use any myself but they can be pretty game changing if you stack up enough of them or in the right um, places and all that and uh, I probably will use a few uh, they are pretty damn cheap as well if you've yet to look around some of the ones that you may want to stack up pretty damn cheap it's just you need a few of them to really make it worthwhile so to talk more about my build uh, it is the Thera Knives uh, Trickster and it's supposed to be full cold but it's not quite yet full cold it's more like half cold and it's been going well enough it's um, not really stalled throughout the campaign at all it was just a bit tough during the league mechanic but for the most part Thera Knives has been doing plenty by itself uh, the only thing I've really had to try and fix was some mana issues and I've put clarity on arrogance which makes it cast off of my life and then other than that you just need a few little upgrades here or there um, to make the build feel quite good in early mapping. EK does do most of the damage in the build but Blade Blast is there for uh, the additional single target. It does feel a bit weird with Return Proj because Return Proj does shoot back your projectiles a bit further behind you than you'd like. Ideally it's like on top of you um, so I've also had to take slower proj mastery to help with that but I think maybe getting the Thero Knives Circle Helm Enchant might essentially mimic what the Nimi's build I did um, will do and that should make uh, Blade Blast a lot more comfortable to stack up. I've yet to try that but it's um, quite possibly going to be the play we'll have to wait and see as well as that the AoE Enchant is going to make it so our uh, pretty much outdoor map clear is going to be a lot nicer. So to go over my character really quick, uh, level 79 minus 1 div is the character name. You can import my character in Path of Building yourself whenever you want. If you go to Path of Building, go to the account section, type in Mathel, that's my account, and then yoink this character. You can see the progress as it's happening or just catch up on stream however you want. Uh, we've got a 5 link at the moment, so I bought a 5 link for 3C, just a base, and then um, got some evasion energy shield on it. Uh, once you get some decent evasion energy shield on your chest, that's when you start to become a good bit tankier, because um, then you start building up a good base of evasion and energy shield for ghost shrouds as well. I've yet to even put uh, grace into the build, so we'll probably um, kick vitality somewhat soon and um, put grace in and level of vitality as much as I can or even on my life as well. Uh, but I've yet to put grace in, just been surviving off of this much evasion and our freeze. Uh, I'm a very, very basic character at the moment, like fucking five to ten C's worth of gear. Bit of life and resist wherever. Um, to make the build feel quite a bit nicer throughout leveling and early maps, try and get cast speed wherever you can. So 20 cast speed on your amulet, uh, some cast speed on your wand, and some cast speed on your rings. So I've just found some basic cast speed um, resists life, that sort of thing, uh, on my gear so far. This belt is from 100 levels ago. Uh, most of this stuff is still really crap. I haven't done any real shopping or upgrading, and the build still feels kind of decent. So you can see we've kind of fixed mana with clarity, but as well as that, enduring mana flask uh, helps a lot prior to the clarity, but then you are very reliant on um, kind of mana flask, so it doesn't feel great. Um, but the other way we've also helped solve the mana is by taking the uh, mastery here, skills cost life instead of 30% of cost, and then that synergizes with what is supposed to be this as well, 40% um, damage with skills that cost life. Uh, but basically I have gone towards the entire tree that I posted for the sort of end game. Uh, next is to just get suppress and um, make sure you do your uber lab as well for um, the final points because the um, trajectory I went was polymath into one step ahead into escape artist into soul drinker still lots of upgrades to go um, important stuff are plus one fizz spell skills so on this um, it's a pretty basic wand it's a minion wand but yeah it doesn't matter it dropped with some decent stats for myself so I started using it um, and my links are currently ethereal knives crit damage crit strikes spell echo return proj the next one is Possibly going to be pinpoint, but I do need some cold penetration in the build as well. So actually going for some cold pen eventually is going to be on the agenda and maybe some room sorrows. So I fully convert. We'll see how that goes. But currently you can see that my um, spread is about a third fizz and then about 
you know, two thirds cold and it should be all cold in the end. It's just that I'm not fully ready to penetrate enemy res. That's why I haven't done it. Uh, and then Blade Blast is just on a four link at the moment. I bought a Blade Blast that's level 21 for six chaos because they're cheap. No one cares about them. Um, Blade Blast, crit strikes, area and crit damage. Currently using area so that the overlap feels better, but hopefully it will feel better once um, I just plain have uh, a better setup with the EK. Because as you can see, currently the return proj does sometimes fire it behind you, but um, I did take the mastery for less proj speed to help put it less further behind. Because the more proj speed you have, the further it's like gonna kind of land behind you more often than not. Uh, so that's kind of why I've avoided proj speed and gotten that as well. But once we get the area enchant, then maybe we can get more proj speed better clear and ultimately better blade blast that's the theory anyway and then we need to put it into something that's going to have like plus levels that sort of thing um and that's pretty much all that needs to be said for now so check my character as it needs to as you need to minus one div through the path of building um and you'll see the progress but um so far so good just going into early white maps and into yellow maps and it should be pretty smooth should take as far as it needs to go pending all of the right upgrades Hopefully your League Stars are going great. The other two that I put out, um, Stormburst Totems and Ice Shot Deadeye, are going great for everyone as well. If you have any questions, feel free to come into the stream and ask. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.